What do you call yourself doing? Boy, I'm making up some bonefish leaders. <laughs> Hot dog, when do we leave? You know, Dave, I get back there in those uh, ocean flats down around Key Largo and Key. Say, so, do you remember the day that uh, you thought you'd uh, sort of sneaked off by yourself? Well, I, I certainly do, Gil, and it wasn't a question of sneaking off. The sun was two hours high and you were still pounding your ears. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I really had some fun that morning. Our host, Rick Morothy, helped me down to the skiff. Yeah, I know. He's carrying the heavy stuff. <laughs> well, anyhow, we loaded the duffel aboard, and I left word with Rick that I was going to work on up the coast toward Key Largo, fishing the ocean flats. There are some beautiful sandy flats up that way, ideal for wading, and I had a whole day ahead of me. It's a perfect morning for bonefish, calm and clear. Weather is very important in this fishing because you must be able to see your fish in order to get a flight of them. Cloudy and windy days are not so good. As the skiff plows through the crystal clear water, a big leopard ray crosses the bow, flapping its wings like a giant bat. And a flock of pelicans fly lazily across the flat. Let's watch them in slow motion. The flats in this area are close inshore, extending right up to the mangroves. Many fishermen use no boats at all, just park their cars and wade out from shore. There's a great fascination about this waiting for bonefish. The man is on his own and he experiences a peculiar sense of peace in the vast quiet of the open sea. It's somewhat like being alone on a wilderness trout stream, a feeling of the primitive, a real closeness to nature. I am using a powerful nine-foot fly rod, a salmon reel carrying 200 yards of Ashaway 14-pound squidding line as backing under my GAF Ashaway fly line and a white streamer fly. The water is shallow and bonefish are very shy, so I wade slowly and quietly, watching. Nope, not a bonefish, just a small shark. Get out of here. And brother, he checks out. Uh-oh, there's a bonefish, no mistake about that. And his tail comes clear out of water as he feeds along the bottom. I try to put that fly in exactly the right spot, close enough so that he'll see it, but not close enough to scare him. He sees it and he follows. He's after it, and he grabs it. I hit him and away he goes as the line cuts the water. It's best to raise the rod high to keep the line from falling on coral or sea fans. And the line cuts the water throwing spray a foot high as the fish goes away at terrific speed and the fly line melts off the reel down into the backing. It's not unusual for a bonefish to peel off five or six hundred feet of line on that first run. And a man begins to wonder if he'll ever stop. But now I can get hold of those reel handles and go to work. There's a lot of line out though and the fish is still strong. He's a powerful, stubborn fighter that hates to give up and I have to let him go again. You can't horse one of these fish, that's for sure. Now I've turned him and he's on the surface, the first sign that he's weakening. So I go to work on him, popping and reeling. Don't let him rest, keep him coming. That's the system. Now he's very tired and almost wet. But he gives it all he's got, dead game to the finish. I work him in close finally. And at last I have him. Eight pounds or more of blue and silver beauty. A solid torpedo shaped battle that would make any angler proud. I remove the fly as quickly, as carefully as possible so as not to injure him. Then I lower him into the water and he goes swimming away, glad to be free.
After leaving the Bonefish Flats down in the Keys, we drove across the Tamiami Trail to Marco Island to try our luck for tarpon. I stopped alongside one of the Canuck a few miles from the Marco Island Inn to do a little fly fishing for baby tarpon, which is great sport on a light fly rod. This looks like a good spot, so let's try it here. There they are, rolling on the surface just like their granddaddies. So I work out line and make my cast. I'm using a bass bug of the top popping type and baby tarpon love it. There should be some action mighty quick now. And one hits it. Man, these little fellows tried first. And into the air he goes, two feet clear of the water. A tarpon is a real acrobat almost from the time he's hatched. Watch him jump. He's a real game fish, all right. This is fun, brother. And out he comes again. Only a couple of pounds, but he's a real scrapper, and he just stays in the air. Now he's about licked and ready to land. I ease him in and get hold of the leader, lifting him out very carefully over the roots and brush so as not to hurt him. We always release these little fellows, so we are very careful not to injure the lips or gills in removing the fly. He's a beautiful silvery little fish, perfectly formed, the perfect little tarpon. I mean to lower him gently into the water, but he doesn't want to wait, so he gives a flop and away he goes. There's another canal across the road, so we'll try it there. I use a roll cast because of the thick brush behind me. Wambo, another strike. He'll be in the air in a second. Watch him gleam there under the surface, and out he comes. That's the great thing about a tarpon. He's air-minded and loves to jump. No fish could keep up that pace very long, so now he's all tired out, too weak to make a clean jump. See the bass bug there on his nose as he comes into the shallow water? After he's landed and released, I'll join Gail Borden again and try for this little fellow's great-great-granddaddy. This bait was a silver mullet and just the right size. I cast the bait over into the calm water close to the edge of the mangroves. And then sat down to wait for Tarpon to come along and pick it up. Something picked up the bait and the line began to run out. So I snapped on the brake and set the hook. It's a Tarpon all right and a buster. A really heavy fish. I knew that the minute I hit him. And does he throw spray? Oh boy. Now you've got a job ahead of you, Gail. Ha <laughs> ha, you ain't kidding, fella. Isn't that a beautiful jump? Six or eight feet clear of the water. Boy, those fish have power. I'm using a homemade rod that belonged to the guide and an old battered reel, but luckily I had a brand new Ashway line. And I hope plenty of it. Boy, that fish is going places. Yeah, he was hooked deep. Must have swallowed the bait so he can't throw the hook. And he sure is giving me a workout. Boy, look at that face twist and turn. This is just an old cane pole, but it had what it took. There he is again. Look at him twist and turn, brother. Man, we had fun there that day. Say, will you hustle along with those leaders so we can make some serious plans to get down there again quick-like? <laughs>